Hi everybody, it's the Gregarious Giggler here, and I'm coming to you today to talk about men. They buy you dinner, open your door, other than that, what are they good for, men? I'm talking about men. Hi everybody, it's the Gregarious Giggler, and I'm coming to you from my secret location in Europe. There's really nothing like a Frenchman telling you nice, romantic things in English with a French accent, or in French, either way. It, as long as he's French, I mean, it works, right? Three days ago, I signed up with a new dating app that some Italians had recommended to me before I left Italy um, uh, a few months ago. It's called uh, Badu. And uh, it is, it, it's just, it's kind of like Tinder. Um, you do swipe left and right, you know, if you, if you like somebody, if you don't like somebody. In this case, you have more photos to look through uh, of the person. There is, you know, a heading, just like on Tinder, but it kind of describes them, how much they weigh, how tall they are, their, their hair color, eye color, all that, all that jazz. One of the very first people that I started talking to was this French guy who said he was vacationing uh, near where I am right now, which I'm not going to disclose at this time. He's on vacation for a few days, is visiting this place where I live, or near where I live, in a town near to the town where I live. Um, we started talking. He was being very vague about why he was on the website or why he was on the app. I asked him if he was on there for sex, and he said, well, some people may be on here for sex, and, you know, good luck to them, whatever, however he put it. We started talking on WhatsApp. And then at some point he called me, had a really nice voice, very, very nice French accent, which I like. We were speaking in English, of course, because I don't speak French. He was very quiet, uh, very soft-spoken, uh, it's very nice to meet you, Lison. Saying really nice things, you know, even through text, told me that my voice is not neutral to a man, which I thought was a very funny way to put that. He's a very nice guy, actually very gentlemanly in general. It didn't say, it lewd to sex, didn't didn't make any inappropriate remarks or, or um, insinuations, so I was pleasantly pl happy with that. And we talked for a while, and he said that the following day he was thinking about coming to my town anyway, as it happened, and, um, you know, kind of, kind of like, killing two birds with one stone. Long story short, he sent me a text in the middle of the afternoon around lunchtime and then I didn't hear from him again all day and then at dinner time I sent him a quick text just saying hi and then we started chatting back and forth on WhatsApp and at some point I said, you know, would it be okay if you called me because I just prefer talking on the phone. I don't really, I'm not into texting. I don't really like the, the back and forth. My fingers get tired honestly and I also just think it's um, inane to, to be like teenagers and just texting. I think that if you're two grown adults, there's no reason why you shouldn't talk on the phone. He did tell me that he was shot, so I, I knew that already. He called me, and it was about 10.40 in the evening, and we started having a really nice conversation, very nice conversation, and I thought, finally, a really nice conversation with somebody. It's not sexual, it's not um, inappropriate, it's not boring. No, we were talking about our jobs, we were talking about our lives, how I ended up in Europe originally, all kinds of different things. And then it happened. What is your um, favorite book? He asked me. Innocent question. Happy to answer. Oh, I don't know. It's a good question. Oh, you know, there's a political book that I really like. It's called Demonic. I don't, uh, don't know it. Uh, and I said it. I, I really like politics. So probably my favorite genre of books to read are p political books. Oh, you like uh, politique? Uh, I do too. I, I, uh, me too. I, I love uh, politics. Ah, really? I love politics. So happy to hear this, you know, just so excited. This guy really likes politics. So do I. I'm passionate about it. Love talking about it, like listening to things. Shout out to Ben Shapiro. We, we both really like politics. And then it happened. Well, I really love reading about politics and I love listening to things about politics. You could hear him smirking over the phone. And now you have a lot to read about because of Trump. <laughs> yes, that's true, I sure do. Do you like him? What do you think? He asked me. 
Well, I would assume that since you're European, especially since you're French, you probably don't like him. Uh, no, I don't. Do you? Well, yes, I do. I voted for him. Silence. And then? Oh, don't tell me this. Why? Do you really not like him? No. I think he is an idiot. He's an idiot? Why do you say that? Because of what he says and what he does. Oh, well, what does he say and what does he do? He's an idiot because he's a liar. <laughs> I was laughing. First he's an idiot, now he's a liar. So which is it? How has he lied? Because he wants to put out all the Mexicans out of the United States. That's a lie! How does that make him a liar? Liar and throwing Mexicans out of the United States don't go together. He never said that. He never said that he wants to put out all of the Mexicans that are living in the United States. He said he wanted to get rid of the, immig the illegal immigrants that are in the United States. Then he said something about Trump wanting to uh, throw out all the Muslims that live in the United States. He never said that. He said that he wanted to be more selective about who he let into the country to be careful because of terrorism, which is something that France could take notes from, I might add. Your country, where they have a bombing every other week in Paris because of all the Muslims that live in France. You know, you're going to talk about my country? I'm going to start talking about your country. There was silence over the phone. Trump is the worst president your country has ever had. Needs history. <laughs> no, Obama was the worst president we've ever had in our history. Why did you not like Obama? What did he do? What did he do? Didn't do that you didn't like? Where should we start? Should we start with health care? Should we start with the economy and unemployment? Should we talk about the race war that Obama started between blacks and whites? Should we talk about the war on the police that Obama started? You know that my country is completely destroyed because of his, because of his presidency, because of what he did while he was in office for eight years. It's no longer the same country. I kind of went off on a tangent and I started venting, telling him what I don't like about my country and telling him that I think transgenderism has ruined the country, homosexual marriage has destroyed the society, abortion has destroyed the society, anti-gun laws have destroyed the society, and I just started listing all the things that I don't like back home. Um, um, I did not understand everything that you just said. Uh, what do you think about abortion and homosexual marriage? Well, I'm against abortion because I think that's murder. And there was another long silence. And then he sounded angry. This is very sad. Not in a sad tone, in a more of, if I were there right now, I would stab you. I'm so angry. And it was a creepy, eerie kind of silent tone. This is very sad. Why is it sad that I don't like killing babies? Because it's, uh, it's very sad. But why? Why? Why is it sad? It it shouldn't. It should be sad that you. Th that you think it's okay to kill babies. Why is it sad that I don't think it's okay? Because I think it's bullshit. Why is it bullshit? Because I think it's all religion and I fuck religion. I don't like it. I don't like religion, I fuck religion. Okay, so then I hit him with this doozy. Well, then you're probably not gonna like this one too much. I am a Christian. Another deep sigh into the receiver. This is very sad. Very sad. It's all very sad. He's very sad. Then he says, It's so sad that uh, such an attractive and intelligent woman could have such a strange mind. <laughs> okay, uh... I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or an insult, but I'm taking it as an insult. No, it's, it's a compliment, but I think maybe if you stay in Europe 
longer you you will have more you will change your mind about these things i think i will never change my mind about abortion i will never think it's okay to murder people while we were talking and i was bashing macron 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 uh yes the moment he steps into office after not even ever ever having governed a preschool let alone anything in your country He's now president of France, and his first line of action is to talk about climate change. We don't want to talk about the terrorism that's going on in our country. We want to talk about climate change, because that's the greatest threat to France right now, not Muslims bombing us every other week. Of course, he got mad. Well, you, you, it's uh, not so easy. You know, you cannot just uh, put everybody in a group and uh, deport them. When you are in the heart of Europe, you, uh, people, uh, they come in from all sides of the country and uh, you cannot stop everybody from coming in. Oh, you know who I did like? The woman that was running for president in France. I can't think of her name. What was her name? No. Was his response no 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 i'm serious what what was her name i can't help me what was her name no please don't uh, i don't i uh, can't uh, joke about this i'm not joking <laughs> i really liked her what was her name no no lisa I'm, i i cannot uh, do this he said something i did agree with well uh, lisa i don't think uh, that uh, we can move uh, forward with these things uh, between us. I agree. I think it's best we not. But, you know, I'm happy to stay friends if you want to stay in touch. Uh, it's uh, not possible. No. Uh, someone who thinks like you, I cannot be friends with that person. You understand? Yes, I understand. I understand that liberals never want to be friends with conservatives. I understand very well. I'm sorry that you, uh, you think this way. Um, but, uh, you have a very strange mind. And uh, I cannot uh, be friends with someone who thinks like you. Or maybe it's that we have differing opinions, I said. Maybe it's not that I have a strange mind. Why can't it be that we just disagree? It's very sad, very sad. So, uh, so then I assume you're not coming to my town tomorrow. I will come to your town, but I will not see you. <laughs> I love that part. Is uh, okay for you? I said, I can't stop you from coming to my town tomorrow, so have a nice trip, have a nice vacation, and... Um, it was nice talking to you. You are a very nice girl, Lisa. Thanks. Click. <laughs> that was the end of the conversation. Or was it Mr. Machone wanted to continue talking to me because that wasn't enough of a torture. So I will read you what he, what he wrote me on WhatsApp post phone call. We hang up. Not five minutes later, I get a text from him. I'm sad, very sad. I thought you left US because you were closer to European ideas. And then I wrote, I think you made the right decision not to see each other tomorrow. Good luck in your life. Because I'm nice, I'm a friendly person, I'm trying to end it politely. I don't want to talk to this person anymore. Also because he said he didn't want to talk to me anymore. I think as I recall, he was the one who said when I offered to stay friends, he was the one who said, no. And here is the big fat cherry on top of the cake. As I said, we could pass over these opinions, meaning we could have this discussion or talk about these issues, if, if we were sex friends, sharing a few words, that's not what you want, I suppose. So, <laughs> I put eight million 
and cry laughing faces and I texted back, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. So, you would be willing to hear my opinion on politics and my ideologies if I were to go to bed with you, but not just listen to me over a cup of coffee. No, that's not what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I think it is, I said with three laughing faces. I think you think I'm tolerable only if we're having sex, but not as a friend. And then he wrote, because he just keeps digging himself deeper and deeper into the hole, that's because I respect you as a body and a mind that I suggest not to meet. <laughs> Which I interpreted to mean that if we were to meet anyway, he would not respect me. <laughs> After a few back and forths with him, he says, sorry. I can't imagine friendship. Friendship? Remember friendship? Sorry, I can't imagine friendship with a far right person, even when she's pretty. I feel the same way with a far left person. But now I know you are looking for sex. In US, a normal person is said communist, meaning that someone who thinks normally is considered a communist. So everybody looks far left when not far right. And I'm doing kind of a crappy French accent, sorry. Uh, and then I wrote au revoir. And he responded, don't judge too fast. We could have common points, but we quickly found what was wrong. And I wrote, I agree, but you were judging too. Oh my God, like you're telling me not to judge. You're the one who hung up the phone. You're the one who said you don't want to see me. You're the one who said that I'm the crazy person. You're the one who said you were sad because I have these strange thoughts or that I have a strange mind. You're judging. I'm the one who said we should be friends, not you. This morning, after he sent me three other text messages last night, which I did not respond to because I was officially done with him, he, he writes me a long message. I'm uncomfortable with the way it ends, but I might be evil to your eyes, and we can discuss with evil. I know there is no God. The three monotheisms are human worst inventions. I can't stand racism. Marine Le Pen's father is publicly anti-Semite as her party. My mother aborted, meaning she had an abortion, in Great Britain in the 70s, because too young to be mother. My sister is a lesbian, living with a woman for 10 years. Do I need to tell more? Let me just interject before I read and finish the rest of this message. So he expects me to be a mind reader and to know, first of all, that his mother had an abortion, he expects me to know that his sister is a lesbian. Just assume that everybody has these skeletons in their closet before I'm allowed to have an opinion about anything. I said I don't agree with abortion. And I said that I think it's murder. I think it is killing babies. I never said that anybody who has an abortion is going to hell. I never said that anybody who has an abortion is an evil person. I never said that anybody who has an abortion should just drop dead. No, I said that I disagree with abortion, just like I disagree when somebody breaks into your house and shoots you in the head. I think it's wrong. He could have told me at some point, polite and mature and adult way, hey, you know, um, I am a little sensitive to these issues because my mom had an abortion when she was young and my sister is actually a lesbian. I would have I would have listened to him. I would have had a, a, a reasonable discussion about that. Doesn't mean it's gonna change my perspective on things, but again, I never said that I hate lesbians, that I hate homosexuals. I said I disagree with homosexual marriage and there is a difference. So redneck's ideas can show an angel-like face even much more seductive than Sarah Palin. Apparently, I have an angel-like face. I'm more seductive than Sarah Palin, which is a huge compliment, and I'm a redneck. Don't talk about Trump to your next European date if you want to spend a pleasant evening and night. Blush smiley face. And then in French, so I'm gonna go ahead and let Google Translate tell you what he said in French because I can't I can't say it properly. Here we go. Let's see if Google Translate actually has a sexy voice. 
Vous êtes toujours fascinant et j'ai été heureux de vous découvrir. Well, it was a woman, so it wasn't sexy for me. You are still fascinating, and I was happy to meet you or discover you or to find you, however he put it. So that was what I woke up to this morning was this message um, about, you know, not, not telling my next European date about Trump because if I want to have a nice evening, um, which now I realize that he's probably making a joke. He's probably trying to give me some sound advice here that if I want to have a nice, enjoyable evening with somebody that I shouldn't express my opinion about Trump. Um, why should I shut my mouth about my opinions just because they don't align with yours? Why don't you hold your tongue? Why don't you just say, yeah, and I mean, I don't like him, but whatever. I mean, I'm glad that, glad you're into politics. That's nice. You know, nice, nice to hear that a woman is into politics or that she takes the time to read about it. Um, means she has a brain, right? Somebody who's involved in current events and actually has thought behind those gorgeous American eyes. I, I, obviously, I didn't respond to this missive that he wrote me. And, um, and then... At six o'clock in the evening, he sent me another message he, that he had been here to my, my town and he was giving me advice about what to, to see sightseeing wise while I'm living here. Wasn't it you who said you didn't want to be friends? Why are you giving me tips on where to go? Mr. President, I did vote for you, but I gotta tell you, I'm having a really hard time getting dates because of you. I feel like I feel like Trump is the kiss of death. So whenever I bring him up with a lot of these guys, uh, they no longer look at me the same way. Quel tristesse. That's it for the gregarious giggler children. I am off now and to go speak with other men on the internet. Oh God, wish me luck. Talking about men They all want a girl Just like the